Hello and welcome to the third unit of hydrogen production methods, where we will discuss about hydrogen production from water by means of thermolysis. We will start with a brief introduction about the different types of thermolysis, followed by a more detailed description of each method. Thermolysis processes involve the extraction of hydrogen from the molecule, molecule that contains it, that is to say, a hydrocarbon or the water molecule, through the application of heat. The heat comes from an external source that it can be, for example, concentrate solar energy or high temperature nuclear energy. The main types of thermolysis processes can be grouped into three depending on the operating temperature. We can identify first uh, the medium temperature thermolysis at low temperature between 900 and 1000 degrees Kelvin. There are several thermochemical cycles with iodine sulfur cycle or ES process being the most promising. Secondly, we have the high temperature thermolysis where reduction reaction of meth metallic oxides take place in a higher level of temperature, up to 2500 degrees Kelvin. And finally, in the highest temperature level, we can find the direct water thermolysis that requires temperature higher than 2500 degrees Kelvin and currently is unapproachable in practice. Currently, it is being researched how to increase the overall efficiency of the process, now it's around 40%, improvements in the design of the equipment, material requirements and separation states. Studies focus on reaction kinetics, thermodynamics, stability of material and the cost. By potential economies of scale, it is estimated that thermolysis is better than electrolysis of water with electricity. In fact, it is estimated that the cost of thermochemical nuclear production of hydrogen are 60% lower than in the case of electrolysis, thanks to the less energy conversions that the thermochemical production involves. In the medium temperature thermolysis, we can identify two main processes. The first one is the ACS cycle, where hydrogen is generated from water, iodine, sulfur dioxide and thermal energy. It basically requires two thermal levels, one at about 850 degrees Celsius to decompose the sulfuric acid molecule and another at about 400 degrees Celsius for the hydrogen ion molecule. In the diagram we can differentiate the different reactions that are taking place. The nucleus is the Bunsen reaction that occurs at about uh, 120 degrees Celsius. The Bunsen reaction occurs in liquid phase spontaneously and exothermic, exothermically. In order to optimize this cycle, it is necessary to introduce an excess of water and iodine. In addition, two distillation processes are carried out. The first distillation produces hydrogen iodine at 230 degrees Celsius. With the separate hydrogen iodine, its decomposition proceeds according to the third reaction at, the th at 360 degrees Celsius and that is where hydrogen is obtained. The second distillation produced sulfuric acid at 360 degrees Celsius which is finally decomposed as 800 at 807 degrees Celsius according to the second reaction. This reaction is what set the high temperature heat demand for the process. The process is a cycle because the sulfur dioxide and water produced by the second reaction are directly uh, guide towards the Bunsen reaction, which only consumes water from the outside. Hydrogen and oxygen are produced as a cycle product. The other process, process that uh, takes place through the UT3 cycle requires also various thermal levels being the maximum 750 degrees Celsius. This intermediate uh, thermal level causes, causes poor coupling 
with available heat sources, for example with high temperature nuclear reactor and as a result there is a loss in efficiency. Despite this, nuclear energy sources and solar heat energy can be used as a heat source for this cycle. The separation of hydrogen from the products is done by membranes that operate below atmospheric pressure, so it is necessary to compress hydrogen and oxygen with the consequent energy consumption. The thermodynamics of this reaction has been shown to be favorable. However, the efficiency of this process is limited to 40% due to the melting point of the calcium bromide, which is 760 degrees Celsius. As for the high temperature thermolysis, at temperatures above, above 1500 degrees Celsius, it is possible to produce hydrogen from the water of a two-state thermochemical cycle using iron oxides. The first step of reduction is highly endothermic and thermodynamically favorable above 2200 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 1 bar, while the second step of water decomposition is slightly exothermic and is carried out at temperatures below 700 degrees Celsius. The problem with this cycle is that iron oxide particles are quickly deactivated in the first step. Thank you for your attention.